Hello everybody and congratulations on what's possibly going to be one of the last videos in this series. This is really kind of the last video I, I really want to make. There, I might add a few videos uh, as time goes on, but this pretty much is going to mark the end of this series. We've covered everything I really want to cover. The things that are left um, is I do want to show one more thing in this, in this script, which is what you're looking at here. Um, and otherwise, just keep in mind all of the variables that we've already brought up, um, and that is uh, how long of patterns are we going to look at, what is the required similarity that we're going to allow for, what's the time frame that we'll even look back on patterns, what is uh, the way that we're even calculating similarity, all that stuff that we've already brought up. Um, and again, the way that you machine learn this kind of stuff is you start playing with those variables, and as long as performance increases in an escalating manner so it continue it, it gets better to a degree that's even better than the previous change right as long as that is the case you continue manipulating that variable until it, that is no longer the case and then you move on to another variable and that's pretty much the best method because really a lot of these variables are there's an infinite number of changes you could make so that's that um, and there's just no way we could possibly cover all of that <laughs> In, in a series. I mean, there's, it's just, it's, that would be a huge, huge undertaking. So anyway, uh, this just was just meant to be educational and cover the basics and you guys can go as, do as you please from here. Now, the only change I was going to, I was going to show you guys and what's up here right now is the, um, about 99% of our processing time is spent in this function right here, pattern recognition. So there's a couple of things we can do with this. One, we could take this function and write it in C and then uh, create a Python import for this using, you could do like Cython, or you can use Cython and Cythonize something. Um, you can use, you could literally write it in C and just make it a, an import for Python. You could use Jython and probably do this quicker. So you can, there's all those options. Um, and there's, there's really a bunch of things that you could do to speed this up. Uh, the other thing you could do as far as pattern uh, recognition is concerned is um, do what we've done here where each each step of the way we're requiring a 50% similarity at least for the first 10. Um, this way what's happening is is in this for it's really this for loop that's causing the most trouble because uh, if uh, the 70% similarity is not met for that pat, map, pat found to be one, then it doesn't even run this stuff. So the main issue is really this for loop right here. So there's a few ways you could speed this for loop up. One of them is just to, uh, like if this one similarity is not greater than 50%, no need to continue. This one's not greater. And so each step of the way, because naturally if we leave it the way that we've had it, even if this is, you know, a thousand percent different, and this is five thousand percent different, and this is a uh, two hundred percent different, it's still going to go through everything, anyways, right? So here we can cut it off right away, and you could go all the way through the entire thirty if you wanted to do that, and save on some pro uh, processing. So just going through these right here, I dropped processing time by about fifty percent, and so that that wasn't too bad. Um, the other thing you can do is use different arrays like NumPy array or you can use imports. There's an import called Blist and um, depending on your array size it can be better. Um, so you can check stuff like that out or again put this entire function in C and just import the function itself. So really there's a lot of options there. But I'm going to leave that to you guys to figure out on your own. So um, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is in the background I'm going to be showing off a, the visual representation of all of our predictions and the outcomes to those predictions. So the thin lines right, are, are comparable patterns that we found. You should recognize those. The thick cyan line is the actual uh, pattern uh, that's in question, so you should recognize that so far. The red and green dots represent each pattern's outcome, and as such, the prediction, either rise or fall, right? So the rise is a green dot, and then if it's to fall, it's a red dot. And then, uh, and that really only means rise or fall, so not the degree at which it would rise or fall. And then that's all averaged together to create an average rise or drop, which is plotted in that kind of dark blue plot. And then finally, we have the cyan plot, which is the actual outcome. And so if you don't know what cyan is, I, 
you probably do, but the sign's like a light blue. So the dark blue is the predicted outcome, sign uh, plot is the true outcome. And just keep in mind the prediction is really only directional, so it's not attempting to predict the exact number, it's just directional. So if you were trading it, as long as the prediction was to continue falling, you would, you know, continue selling, and then as long as the prediction was, you know, continue rise, you would hold, okay? So that's all that that would mean. So anyway, we're going to be putting that in the background as I discuss a few uh, things that I consider to be pretty important uh, to this series. Like the disclaimer says in the beginning of every video, and I said in the beginning of the series, the series was for educational use only. Now, I didn't just say that for legal reasons. I mean it. Uh, so first off, you know, this program is, is very basic, yet you can see already the complexity that is already coming to us, right? And so not, as, not only is the field of just trading overall uh, very, very tough, but quant analysis and algo trading overall is really difficult, and the competition is very challenging. People are paid million dollar salaries just to produce stuff like this. You know, like people come out of MIT or Harvard or whatever, and they're paid million dollar salaries just to spend their time devoting um, the mathematics and, and algorithms to this practice, right? So that's your competition. The figure is about somewhere between 95 and 99 percent of traders lose money in the market. Period. Next, of those one to five percent of people that aren't maybe losing money, uh, most of them don't actually beat the market either. So really, they're losing money and taking more risk uh, than than if they just invested pure in the market. Now. What I mean by that is if you compare to, say, the S&P 500 growth year to day, uh, today, today is October 14th, 2013, as I'm filming this, and year to date, the S&P 500 index is up 20%. So if you just bought the S&P 500 and held it, so say you bought an index fund like the uh, SPY, right, the SPY, you'd be up 20%. And if we included dividends, which you also get if you would have held uh, you'd be up 21.5%. So year to date, 21.5%, and you've done nothing. You've done, you've put in really no effort besides the execution of the purchase. You've paid one commission on this, basically, and you're left with a bunch of free time, right? So despite the name automated trading, I've never met an auto slash algo trader who didn't spend most of their time dealing with it. So it's not like it's a passive income. And uh, everyone interested in quant trading, you know, like the numbers, right, surely must agree that even just the 1% to 5% odds of winning, those are horrible odds, right? You wouldn't execute a trade or a group of trades with 1% to 5% odds unless, of course, the, you know, the outcome was thousands and thousands of percent if you got it right, you know. But that's not what's at stake, right? And so, so no, you know, but yet a lot of people are, are, are taking these 1% to 5% odds and so it is kind of strange, but I get it. You know, the field is very appealing. It's exciting. It's sexy. But it, when you break it down, it, it's gambling most of the time. <laughs> so, so with that, just be aware of what you're getting into if you decide to continue to pursue uh, this exact field, right? Uh, and always compare your results to something like the S&P 500 on a long-term scale, right? And, you know, I recognize I'm not the smartest guy in the room all the time, and some people really are smart enough and really do beat the market and make a lot of money doing it, right? And But the problem is most of quant traders think that's them, right? They think they're smarter than everybody, right? And, and soon find out that they're not. And, and, you know, some people are actually just addicted to the gambling part of it and treat the markets that way. So you don't want to do that either or, you know, and then the worst part is they don't realize that they're, it's the gambling they're addicted to, right? The rush. Now, all of that said, machine learning, pattern recognition, data manipulation, that, I mean, it's all, it's all just fun, right? I made this series mostly for fun and to teach. I realize that's kind of silly sounding to most people. They don't quite understand why that's fun, but it's fun to me. And if that's you, then you know what? Have at it, right? That's what I was doing here. And if you're that tiny, you know, percentage that's just brilliant and they can make bank off this, then I'm also happy for you, right? Just just be smart about this stuff. And I was happy to at least just teach you guys, but I certainly don't want to lead anybody on thinking that if you do what I've just showed you, you're going to make a ton of money because you're going to probably lose all of your money if you traded on this system. So please don't do it.
So along the lines of it being fun as well, uh, this entire series and program was made by me just straight on the fly. I uh, have no experience at all with pattern recognition when it comes to like a line. I do it a lot with sentiment analysis, but that's a lot different than the pattern recognition of a line. So that should also shed some light on how basic this program is and also the possibility of there to be something wrong with this. Um, the entire thing was just kind of made as I went, right? So I was just kind of doing it as I went and filmed, and it was, it was kind of fun and interesting. But uh, it, it is certainly a very basic program. Luckily, if you get to this point and you realize, oh my gosh, you're right, that's a crazy idea. Um, machine learning and pattern recognition can be used for all kinds of things, and I'll probably have some more video series coming out uh, for that kind of purpose. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing one on uh, image recognition and stuff like that, so like facial recognition. And if you do know machine learning, it's a great skill to have, and it, this, the skill alone can make you a good, a sizable amount of income, like facial recognition, and not really so much anymore, but not too long ago, that would have gotten you like an instant uh, government, uh, <laughs> government contract for big, huge money, more than you'd make in the market, probably. So anyway, good skill to have programming as well overall. So. Um, if anything, you got that now, and uh, I enjoyed the series. Hopefully, you enjoyed the series. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and the subscriptions, and until next time.